Hello fellow Star Wars fans, my name is Starpter and welcome back to the channel. This is my spoiler free review for Star Wars Into the Dark written by Claudia Gray. This is part of the High Republic, a brand new exciting time period set in Star Wars. Before we get started, this book isn't out until February 2nd, but you can pre-order it now wherever books are sold. I have a link to its Amazon page in the description down below. So yes, the High Republic is this great time for the Jedi and the Republic. It is a time of relative peace in the galaxy. There's a lot of expansion into the Outer Rim going on. However, there is a cataclysmic event that really is the focal point of this first phase of the High Republic, and that is the great disaster that is where charles soul book you know light of the jedi is really focused on we also have a test of courage by justine ireland that goes into that and we have this book into the dark plus the comics written by kevin scott as well as the high republic adventures written by daniel jose older all these five authors are storytelling in a way that is going to be interconnected and have a lot of these events and these characters that you might find familiar as you're reading through all these different works. So we're going to focus today on Into the Dark. As I said, this is written by Claudia Gray. And our story starts with a bunch of Jedi and a couple other crewmates on a ship going through hyperspace. And they encounter an issue where they have to immediately leave hyperspace and they are stranded in this area of space. The only way for them to be safe is to go and dock with this abandoned space station. And, well, that doesn't go very well because they soon find a very dark side-esque power that emanates from the station. And that is something that terrifies the Jedi. And it really sets forward the different kind of story paths that this story goes down. So that is the gist of it. This is very much a mystery Star Wars novel. There's a little bit of horror elements in there, but it is definitely more of that, okay, what is going on for the first half of the book? And then the other half of the book is when we really just jump into overdrive. But let's talk a little bit about the characters because I think we really have some memorable characters that Claudia Gray has introduced to us as Star Wars fans because, like I said, these are basically all brand new characters that we haven't experienced before because this is set way before the Skywalker saga. So we have one character named Orlin, and she is an Umbaran Wayseeker. So she's a Jedi that is going to seek out things. She's not really part of the Order anymore. She listens to the call of the Force. We also have a character named Wreath Silas, and he is really our main character of the story. He's a Padawan, but he's a Padawan in a very unconventional manner that we haven't experienced before in Star Wars. He is a character that actually has to try very, very hard to do some miraculous things in the Force. A lot of people are just naturally talented, a lot of Jedi, whereas he has to work twice as hard to get the results that he is looking for. So we haven't really seen that in Star Wars. Plus, He's a person that is very sheltered. He's lived on course on his whole life, and he hasn't really gone to the frontier until his master gives him the mission that she wants to, you know, have him accompany her to the Outer Rim. And that is where he really starts to say, okay, this is not my thing. I like to hang out in the archives. He's one of those type of Jedi that rather just keeps to himself and not in a state of danger, which he soon becomes very much embroiled in. We also have a character named Dez, right in. And he is your upstanding Jedi Knight. He is what you think of as a shiny example of the Republic and the Jedi working together. He is all for craving excitement and adventure. And rounding out the list of the Jedi, we have Komak. And Komak has a long history, and we learn about that history in this novel. But he is also more of the bookish type for the Jedi. He is an archivist. So he spends a lot of time looking at the history and the archaeology of the past and makes connections and is very much more of a, uh, a, a type of Jedi that focuses on the cosmic force. He really reminds me a lot of Qui-Gon Jinn. And we also have these characters that are aboard their ship called the Vessel who command the Vessel. We have Afi. And Afi is... An orphan of the Bind Guild, the Transport Guild. They have transport guilds that take people from, or things, you know, basically from one point to another, you know, the core to the Outer Rim. She is basically on the verge of inheriting this whole operation. And we also have the captain of the ship named Leox, and he is a guy that just is basically a spice addict, but he's also got a lot of really cool 
parts in this novel where he's just like a surfer dude. He reminds me of just like that chill guy that's just hanging out, trying to help his buddies out. And he says some really profound things. This guy has some awesome wit, and I just love his personality. And we can't forget Geode, which is basically a sentient rock, which I'm not going to talk too much about him because you just got to read the book for yourself to see what crazy stuff he gets into. So yes, as you could tell, I'm excited about these characters because Claudia Gray has really lended a lot of personality to each and every one of these characters. And when we see them working together, when we're seeing them maybe butt heads a little bit, it definitely adds to the overall uh overall creativity of this project here i do want to say some things about the jedi here we see jedi doing some miraculous things that i mentioned in light of the jedi for my review of that as well as test of courage we're seeing jedi pull off different kind of abilities and things that we never imagined jedi working together as one to, to do something that will help them what that will help other people i love the attitude of the jedi in this how they're always out to just not not for themselves like we see them pretty dogmatic in the prequels right that's their downfall but no in this book we're seeing them going helping uh the innocents and trying to just safeguard the the people of the republic and people that maybe want to be brought into the republic because not the, the republic is not spread very very far at this point I also do want to talk about the consequences. That was one of the biggest things I've seen in this book is just the consequences of the actions of, for instance, Affie and dealing with her future. And the same thing can be said about Wreath and his choices of just contemplation of, for instance, you know, if I do bodily harm to somebody, what are the ramifications of that going to be? He has lightsaber training, but he does not want to use it. And that goes for every Jedi that's in this era. They do not want to use the lightsabers unless they absolutely have to. Unless they are provoked, they have to defend themselves. They will use the lightsaber then, but it's always for defense, never for attack, as we find out. The, also, the, the inner monologue, the way that Claudia Gray writes these characters, or these italicized little inner monologue uh, statements or phrases that these characters say I do like that little added finesse into the actual prose of this book because it does make me kind of connect more with the characters like oh this is an important part what they're talking in their head to themselves interesting stuff there and I have to say of course the ties to the other High Republic material this is just great content we're seeing characters float in we're seeing things from Light of the Jedi floating in there and just a bunch of brand new lore too. I mean, it's not just you know colliding with other High Republic stuff. We're seeing stuff that connects to stuff from the Clone Wars, giving backstory on that and other things far flung into the future. So that is really cool when we're seeing those kind of reveals there. And the reveals are great because we're dealing with characters that are not established in any other time period. So anything can happen. I got... Honestly, guys, I got some of the biggest reveals in this book just from the sake of, oh my gosh, I didn't see that coming because whatever, this character does this or something. I'm trying to be very vague here for risk of spoiling anything, so bear with me, but you probably get what I'm saying is, okay, these characters, these places, nothing is safe when you are writing an entire new era in Star Wars. So I want to talk about my negatives. I will say there are flashback chapters that deal with Orla and um komak and they are not exactly uh they i feel like they turn off the action a little bit that's happening in the current present timeline so you're gonna have a really awesome cliffhanger and then it goes to a couple pages of what is happening in the flashbacks and now that could be a good like kind of uh palette cleanser i guess you could say but for me personally i just felt like it took me out of the momentum a little bit that claudia was building up in some of these really tension built moments and I will say the pacing for me was a little bit on the slow side for that first half of the book. Once we got to a certain moment, I was like, I'm in and I cannot put this book down. But it took me a little bit to kind of get into it. And that is basically the only things I could say that were negative for me for Into the Dark. So with that being said, I got to give Into the Dark a score of an 8.5 out of 10. The High Republic, the first wave of the books from Into the Dark, from uh light of the jedi as well as the test of courage all great books i'm so happy to see that the high republic has managed to actually hold on to the hype and really give us that awesome brand new unique star wars content that we've been looking for as far as claudia gray's other books this is not my favorite of her books i still think that belongs to probably leia uh, princess of alderaan but uh, basically claudia gray 
you can't do any wrong with this author. She is great. She knows the world of Star Wars inside and out from all different types of characters. Again, we're getting so many Jedi stories with the High Republic, but it's the people, the everyday man like Affy and Leox that are just living in this whole world of the Republic and everything going on. I just find those characters almost, if not more fascinating than the Jedi themselves. So what do you guys think of Into the Dark? Are you gonna pick this one up? Let me know in the comment section down below. For more on the High Republic, as I mentioned, I have my reviews for Light of the Jedi as well as a Test of Courage on the channel right now, plus a whole ton of other High Republic videos in my special playlist. So make sure you go ahead, check that out. If you like that and you aren't subscribed, please subscribe because it does support the channel. That's gonna do it for me, Star Wars. Thank you so much for watching and may the force be with you always. We are all the Republic. Thanks for checking out the video. Please hit that thumbs up symbol. It helps me know that I'm making content that you guys enjoy. And if you enjoyed this video, I also include two videos down below you guys should check out. And please consider subscribing to this channel. It helps support me and it notifies you guys of when I get new videos up on the channel. You can also contact me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Star Raptor.